All right. So the test, the verse test Friday will be Job 1, 21b and 22. Um, I will still try to I will still try to give you a worksheet Friday for the unit test. I'll still try to give it to you, but chances are, because we are having teachers conference uh, the following Thursday and Friday, um, chances are we probably won't take it until Monday, the uh, Monday following that. So, You'll have plenty of time. We'll have time to go over it. We'll have two class times next week, Monday and Thursday, to go over the worksheet and make sure you got everything where it needs to be. And uh, then we'll take that test on, on the following Monday. Um, and it, I think everybody did turn in your homework. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we turned in your homework uh, from Monday. So we're all set, we're all squared away. Let's uh, turn to page number 40. Page number 40, Joseph, God planted for good. Uh, before we turn the lights off, I, I will ask you to turn the lights off in just a moment. But, uh, I just want to give you uh, an introduction here. Um, how many of you know who Steve Jobs is? Okay, so. Mr. Apple himself. All right. So, all right. Shh. Shh. They, they started out talking about Steve Jobs in this particular lesson. And you'll see the reason why here in, in a little bit. Um, uh, at least I think you will. Okay, you okay, can turn the lights off. I think you will. That's one of the I'll check it again. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, I messed up Monday uh, for uh, UL and uh, Nathan, for your sakes. And it was really a mess. And Victor probably helped somewhere in there, I'm sure. But uh, the camera, for some stupid reason, I never really paid much attention to it before, but the camera has a little light on the, on the monitor there for the little picture and it has a green light and has a red light. Green light means that it's not running. Red light means it is running. It's like so Monday my mind was not working in that way. My mind was thinking red means stop and green means go. And so you were having a good time moving the camera all around to me and to Mr. Fletcher and all that. And that all got recorded. What? The actual, the actual class didn't get on on that film. It was like, so I don't know what you guys got, uh, Nathan and, and uh, UL, I don't know what you guys got. But I think you did get the questions. I, I, I think I kind of want to make sure you at least got the questions. Um, so, anyways, so back to Steve Jobs and uh, Mr. Apple here. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and talk about him in a little bit, but jo the, the story leads us into the story of Joseph. Joseph was sold, these are just notes here, but get them down. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers. Okay, so the story... If you remember the story, the story is that uh, his brothers were jealous of him. He was dad's favorite. Um, dad loved him extremely and did all kinds of extra things for him. Um, to top it off, Joseph's the one, if you'll remember, Joseph's the one who said, um, I had a dream last night that all of you were going to bow down before me. Basically, that's what he was saying. All of you are someday going to bow down before me. And he had he did that twice. He had two different dreams, and they both were basically the same story. Um, that didn't really help 
his relationship with his brothers. Because now they hate him even more. Because he's going on about how he's going to be um, exalted, basically, above them, and they're all going to bow down to him. Ryan, what's your problem? Oh, is this 2-4? Yes, sir. It is. No. It is 2-5. Two 2-5 five. Two five today. Jonathan. Probably not because that's unplugged. So oh, I got you. There oh, I got you. Is. I got you. I got you. A little help from your friends. Okay, stop the talking again. Junior high boys. So, with their hatred toward their brother, they throw him into a pit. They actually threw him in that pit in a, uh, an attempt to just go ahead and have him killed. He's going to die. So their, their thought is that some wild animal is going to fall into that pit with him and kill him. That's basically what the plan was. They're just going to throw him in there. He can't get out. Eventually some animal is going to drop in there. They're going to kill him or else he's just going to die because he doesn't have anything to eat. So they're going to be rid of it. That's the main thing. They're going to be rid of it. There's some, I'm, I'm having a real strong feeling that you're not going to stay there for very long. I'm not doing anything. Huh? I'm not doing anything. No, I, but you're not doing anything. You're looking at him, but you're not paying much attention to me. Um, so, then they had second thoughts about it. Ah, do we really want to do that? Um, we could make some money off of him. We could sell him into slavery. That's an idea. And just at that, that moment, a group came by that deals with slavery, uh, likes to purchase people for slavery. And so they sell Joseph to these, this group, and they're going to take him and, uh, to Egypt to the slave market. And auction him off and sell him as a slave there. And so um, it ends up, the whole story is bizarre on all the different things, twists and turns of Joseph's life. Most of you know the story pretty well. Um, so he, he gets purchased by Potiphar to be a servant in his home. Potiphar's wife tries to force him into having a relationship with her. He wouldn't have anything to do with it. He happened to have a coat on. She grabbed him. He peeled out of his coat, took off running. And, uh, and then basically his wife said, look, honey, uh, he forced himself on me. And this is, he left his coat. There's proof that he forced himself on me. And so Potiphar said, OK, that's it. You're going to prison. And so he gets to prison, and while he's in prison, he ends up working his way up to, like, second in command of the, of the prison. He's a prisoner, but he's like one of the highly respected prisoners there, given a lot of responsibilities. Um, he ends up, because of his ability to envision dreams, and, and interpret them, he ends up getting a position of second in command of all of Egypt because um, they're going to they're be thrown into a famine here and they need somebody that's going to help them through that. He comes up with a diabolical, not diabolical, but intelligent, intellectual uh, plan to get them through the time of famine and and help them to even prosper during that time. And even, uh, they have seven years of prosperity. They, they stockpile it, they save it, with the idea that that's going to carry them through those seven years that they're not going to have prosperity, when they're going to have famine. And so, it, his plan works. And basically, all the people in this whole area of the Middle East, they all are starving, and they don't have anything. 
and they end up coming to Joseph. He's put in charge of everything that Egypt had. So they're coming to Joseph asking for some food. And he's able to provide food for people from all over the known world at that time. They're all coming to, to Egypt to Joseph. And so he, he literally is, is helping everybody by his brilliant plan that God gave him. All right, so along with these people that are coming, his brothers end up being sent by their dad to go and see if they could get some food from Egypt. And my next point, 25 years later, they would meet again. So after 25 years, of Joseph being basically held in um, slavery in Egypt after 25 years, his brothers make their way to Egypt to see if they can get some food. They have to go before Joseph. After 25 years, Joseph doesn't look the same. And besides that, as soon as he saw it was his brothers, he changed his appearance. So that it, it, he really didn't look like Joseph. Not only that, but he spoke Egyptian. On purpose, he spoke Egyptian so that they wouldn't think, uh, you know, that it can be our brother because he doesn't look like him for one thing, but he doesn't talk like him either. And he was really mean to them. He was rough on them and basically told them, uh, you're, you're not going to get anything from me until I see all your brothers. And he, he really wanted to see Benjamin. Benjamin was born of the same mom, so they were full-blooded brothers. The rest of the boys were born from the other mother, so they weren't really 100% blood brothers. They were half brothers, if you want to call it that. So they were all half brothers. He wanted, he wanted to see Benjamin. And his brothers knew that if, if we get Benjamin and he comes down here and something happens to him, it's going to kill our dad. Because our dad felt bad enough losing Joseph. And now Benjamin becomes his second favorite son. Um, and so if something happens to Benjamin, it's, they know it's going to kill their dad. And so they, they're hesitant. They're like, how in the world are we going to do this? Dad's never going to even let him go because he's become really protective. And he, he doesn't want Benjamin going anywhere because he doesn't want to lose him. Uh, but eventually they do get Benjamin to go uh, with the, the brothers and they go and meet with Joseph again. And finally, Joseph has had enough of his little game, and he's tortured him enough that finally he tells him, I'm your brother, Joseph. And they all weep and cry. They're, they're, they're a little bit scared, like, oh, no, we're in trouble now. Because they know what they did to him. They knew how they treated him. They didn't deserve anything good from Joseph because they weren't very good to him. They were mean to him. So if Joseph pays back in kind, they're in trouble. They're not, they're not going to get much of anything from Joseph. Uh, but Joseph shows a forgiving spirit, a gracious spirit, and he gives them food to take back home. Besides that, he asks them to bring his dad and, and the whole family, bring all the family, and come to Egypt, and they end up getting the nicest land there in Egypt. Now, so that brings a question. It's not one of the questions on, on your quiz. I don't think they're on the quiz uh, for this unit. Um, why was Joseph sold into slavery? No, it's not the actual questions yet. But why, why did 
God allowed Joseph to be sold into slavery. Guys, this is this is like the ultimate question. When people are going through some tough times, they quite often will ask why. Why is this happening? Why, why did I find out I've got cancer? Why did I lose my job? Why um, did my kid have a terrible accident and, and is in the hospital? Why did all this stuff happen? And people ask why. It's a, it's a really hard question. And it's a, it's a consistent question that's asked time and time again. So you look at the life of Joseph and you say, well, you know, why did all this happen to him? He was a fairly good boy. You know, he seemed to be in touch with God more than his other brothers. God definitely had his hand on him because everything that he did prospered. So he, he's definitely um, being used of God. Why, did, why is he going through all this? Why, why did he end up being sold into slavery? It was God that sent him. Uh, somebody, if you can find Genesis 45, verse 8. First person to find it, you can start reading it. Genesis, Genesis 45, verse 8. Got it. Sorry, read it. So now I was not you that sent, sent me uh, in this book. God and he has made me a uh, father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler through throughout all the land of Egypt. Okay, don't lose that. Okay. Hang on. All right, so it was God that sent him. Do you, need, do you need light? Sure. I, I can't hold it. Here's my phone. Okay. So it was God that sent him to preserve life. Uh, read verse 5. That's all. Read aloud. Wait, uh, 45. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Now therefore be not grieved, nor nor angry with yourself that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Okay, just hang on, don't lose that. Alright, so Joseph again showing his graciousness. Joseph showing his graciousness told his brothers. Don't get worried about this. Don't feel bad about this. Don't be upset about this. Um, because God sent me here to preserve life. And when you think about it, as I said just a little bit ago, Joseph literally saved people's lives from countries all around the known world at that time. I mean, he literally did. Besides the fact that he saved the life of all of his family members. They were about dying because there's no food. There's a famine. There's not even enough food for them to live off of. They're going to starve because it's running out. Whatever supply they had, it's running out. And if they don't get something... They are. They're all going to die. Everybody in the known world in this in this area here, Middle East, Middle Eastern area, they're all going through the same thing, and they're getting desperate. And so Joseph's mission that God has given him is to go to Egypt and preserve life for everybody especially his family. Now, God meant it for good. Um, read chapter 50, verse 20. Okay. Okay. But after he, he 
thought he will judge me, but God meant to meant it unto good to bring to to bring to God as it is this day to to save me from the whole life. Okay. You meant it for bad. He's talking to his brothers now. You guys meant harm to me. You meant to kill me. You meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. God, in, in his great wisdom, saw the whole plan. Everything that was going to come together, he saw it all. And he orchestrated it all to come together so that at the perfect time, in the perfect place, in the perfect way, everything was going to come together to, again, he says there again, to preserve life. Literally, to help everybody, especially his family, to live. Now, God uh, had promised that Abraham's seed would multiply the earth. It would grow. It would bless the whole earth. It would um, multiply. It would, and, and these shall all nations of the world be blessed. He promised that long ago in the Abrahamic covenant. The word in uh, Genesis 50, verse 20, the two words, thought and meant, that both come into the, that verse. Both of those words are in that verse. They both come from the same word. And that word means plan. It's all part of God's plan. Fellas, Justin, have a sit up. God has a plan for everyone of his creation. All along the way, Joseph could have gotten discouraged. Could have gotten upset. Could have turned on God. God, I don't understand. You're being so mean to me. Why? I don't deserve this. He could have. He could have. His attitude could have been really bad. He, by the way, would have had somewhat of a right to have been a little bit upset. Because he never really did anything wrong. That you can see in Scripture, he, he never really did anything significantly wrong. And yet here he is, he's actually in prison. For something he didn't do. In fact, he was totally the opposite of what was he was being accused of and, and arrested for. He did totally the opposite. He packed up and ran. He got away from him. Potiphar's wife. It's all part of God's plan. And remember the dreams that God gave him way back when he was a young boy? Uh, your brothers are going to bow down to you. You're going to be lifted up. And your brothers are going to bow down to you. Guess what happens? Here they are. Unknowingly, they don't even know who he is at this point. But unknowingly, they're bowing down to Joseph because he's the guy that controls everything. He's got all the power. He can give them food or not give them food. And so they're, they're very respectful to him and bowing down to him and, and imploring him to help them. It brings up the verse in Romans 8.28. My God. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, and you know that all 
things work together for good to them that love God. So then we're the call according to his purpose. And you know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Pastor Johnson, who started this school, how many, do many of you remember Pastor Johnson? Some of you do. Who's wow. that? Oh, that's sad. So, so you know the I never met him, but I knew him. Yeah. Nobody, nobody is from Johnson. Did you meet him? Yeah. You sure? I saw him. I shook his hand. I met him. 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 As time goes by, there's going to be less and less people that are going to remember him. But he's a great, he's a great man. Uh, Pastor Johnson was like a dad to me. Uh, whenever he needed to go to the airport early in the morning, he'd call me up and say, Brother Gary, could you take me to the airport in the morning? It's kind of early. Yes, I'll preach out to so I spent a lot of time taking him to the airport or picking him up from the airport. I took him to the hospital one time uh, because he was going to be admitted, but his wife was sick at that time, and so he didn't really have anybody to take him to the hospital. I picked him up from the hospital uh, after he got uh, let out, and so him and I were pretty close, uh, like a dad. But I, I'm talking about him because this was his life first. If he ever signed your Bible, he would always sign it with that verse. And you know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. And he pretty much, I believe, he pretty much got that verse as his life's verse because he went to Tennessee Temple, which is no longer there anymore, but he went to Tennessee Temple University uh, and graduated from there. And the founder of that college was Lee Robertson. He was the pastor of the church there, and he started that college. And Lee Robertson also had that as his life's verse. Now, Lee Robertson picked it as his life's verse because their daughter, who they named Joy, died. I believe, I believe she died. Um, she died, I, I think she either died in childbirth or she died shortly after she was born. And it was the it was the first child I think that the Robertsons had. And it, it was pretty tough on them. Both of them. Uh, both Mr. Uh, Pastor and Mrs. Robertson had a tough time. This was their daughter. You know, was, they were all excited about her coming into their life and being a part of her own stuff. And now she's gone. And rather than just get mad at God, God, why did you do this? Um, they decided that they were going to make something good out of this. So they started a camp for kids in the Tennessee area where they lived. They lived around Chattanooga. Around the Chattanooga area, they started a camp for kids who could not afford to go to camp. They didn't have to pay anything. It was totally free to go to this camp. And so for kids who were whose parents didn't really have enough money to send them to camp, they opened up that, that, that camp for them and they called it Camp Joy after their daughter who, who died. And from that camp, thousands, I'm talking, thousands of kids have come to Christ by going to that camp and hearing the preaching and studying the Bible and having a good time at that camp. Thousands of kids over the years have been saved. And so that's where the, 
they came up with that verse. Well, Pastor Johnson and Mrs. Johnson also lost a baby. And I believe it was, it, it died before it was born. Uh, while Mrs. Johnson was carrying it, it had died. And so they lost uh, a, a girl uh, in, 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 while she's developing, she died. And so they lost a girl. And so that, that became a real strong verse for them. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. It's all going to come out for good. So Joseph, guys sit up. Joseph is going through this trial, tough life, things going badly. And he could get upset at God and say, God, why are you letting this all happen to me? I don't deserve it. He could have done all that. But he just kept a good attitude, a good spirit throughout the whole thing. God kept blessing him and exalting him higher and higher and higher. He had his dips. Yeah. I mean, he was in Potiphar's house and he worked his way up to where Potiphar led him in charge of everything that he had except his wife. And when his wife tried to take advantage, he would go for it, and she falsely accused him, and shoot, down he goes, and he ends up in jail, in prison. He worked his way up in prison until finally he was way up at the top in the prison. The prison uh, guard put him in charge of everybody and everything that went on down in the prison. It was basically like he was pretty much free, but he wasn't free. I mean, he, he had freedom to go and do what he wanted to do in the prison. But he couldn't go to the store. You know, he couldn't take a cruise or anything like that. He was stuck in the prison, but he had freedom to do pretty much anything he wanted to do there. God lifted him up and eventually uh, when, when the, the king uh, had a dream, didn't know what it was. Uh, he would. They found out that Joseph. Joseph's a pretty smart guy. He's got it figured out. You should talk to him. And he was able to interpret the whole dream and come up with the the brilliant plan of of the seven years of famine or seven years of famine or prosperity and the seven years of famine and how to ration the food in such a way that it could stretch out and and feed pretty much everybody in the world at that time. So we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. How does that come in with Steve Jobs? Um, okay, so the first question, oops, the first question you can write down is why did this section start with a story about Apple co-founder Steve Jobs to show the, the coincidences that that story has as does the story of Joseph. <laughs> if you read this guys, it's kind of an amazing story. Steve Jobs was born out of wedlock. His mom and dad weren't, weren't married yet. And so at that time his mom didn't want to raise him by herself. Dad wasn't really committed yet to being a part of this. So his mom 